but it's not, it should not be coming out of the drywall category because there are two other categories in Xactimate that can be used. So you have the water category, the WTR is a water remediation and, and a restoration category essentially, where just simply, and I know a lot of you guys know this already, but like in that category, what I mentioned before, it's category one, category two, category three water damage, right? So for instance, on my estimate with that one spot, water spot and the roof and all that, I'm gonna put R and R drywall on there. But the guy over here asked me a question, you know, what are you gonna do when they go crazy on you on the estimate? You know, I'm gonna do a number of things which we'll talk about today. But one of the things I could do if it goes haywire is, you know what, you're right. The estimate is all messed up. Now that I think of it, now that I'm looking at it and you're causing me to look at it more and more, I'm seeing that that's category three water damage, right? And I shouldn't have put remove and replace drywall. I should have put tear out wet drywall and bag for disposal. Because how much is that charged by the square foot, right? And is it category one, category two? You know what I mean? Like it's it's more by the square foot each category. As I'm sure you can you can understand. So uh, you're right. I should tear I should do tear out wet insulation bag for disposal. Tear out wet baseboard bag for disposal. Tear out wet cabinets. The whole nine yards. Tear out wet flooring, wet carpet, wet pad. Right? These are way more expensive. Than just, you you would love it if I wrote it like that, wouldn't you, Mr. Adjuster? You know what I mean? Like R and R drywall. Get out of here with that. You know? I'm your host, Chad Michael on the roof. That's it. Getting a tarp on the roof. Why didn't he do that? Right? Like it's amazing to me. I'm driving through Panama City and I'm seeing all this rubble with a common denominator. Nobody has a tarp on the roof. Now I was seeing patches of tarps on the roofs. Patches of felt and things. Some of these contractors even had, you know, the gall to put their name on their incompetence. They had logos on felt that they're putting on patches and stuff, right? All over the news, they're talking about, be careful. These contractors are gonna rip you off and take your money, right? BBB warns, you know, attorney general warns, but nobody is saying a word about, you people need to put tarps on your roofs now, <laughs> now, right? So none of these contractors know it. That's what really kills me. The contractors, like they're out there trying to sell roof jobs and not talking about getting it covered and protected, right? So like if you look at a Pro job or better yet, Belfour, like the leader of insurance restoration internationally, big, big, big company, right? If you roll up on one of their jobs, that roof is tarped 100%, 100%, right? It's got nice pretty battens on it on the outside, furring strips all around the perimeter, the tarp tucks nicely over top of the, the edges, right? All the openings are taped and protected. It's done properly. Sometimes I even put like plywood or OSB under the tarp. It's a way to not create penetrations on the roof, right? And so what I'm getting at here, even in a hail storm of decent size hail, okay, I submit to you, these roofs need to be protected 100%. 100%. I can remember I was in Plano, Texas as a contractor. I was sitting down with an elderly couple, signing them up. And, the and I said, well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get this roof tarped up immediately. That's the first thing we're going to do. Since of our involvement, we're going to tarp it. We're going to get it. We don't want any, you know, under our watch, we don't want there to be thousands of dollars in damage extra. Why didn't it get covered up, right? So like these insurance companies, they don't have to pay for that, right? Do they? They do. They don't have to, but they do. We're talking about how bad insurance companies are, right? But they, they take a major blasted hit right in the beginning because nobody's competent enough just to simply cover up the roof, okay? And you think about that right there, how bad of a hit they're taking. Do you think they're going to resist you when you tarp the roof and you bill them for it? So, like, here's the thing. In Panama City, these people are going out there and putting patches on the roof. How much are they getting paid for that? Oh, it's an emergency services call, right? So they're getting paid for that. 
Okay. I mean, what's that? 200 bucks, right? So in Xactimate, it charges by the square foot to install the tarp. By the square foot. So if we're going up there and putting a four by four tarp on, how much are we getting paid for that? A couple bucks, 20 bucks, not even, right? So, but if we tarp a 30 square roof and we put on there, remove and replace tarp because we're doing the roof job, so we have to remove it, okay? And we put, and that includes that per square fry, uh, price in Xactimate includes the battens. It used to not, but it does now. Um, it's a little bit higher on the square foot though. And, but it does not include the perimeter, the lumber that, that needs to be installed on the perimeter, right? It does not include any of the masking and taping. It does not include steep charge. So if it's steep, we already know how to do a steep charge in Xactimate. High charge, doesn't include any of that, okay? It doesn't include additional labor hours for other things. It doesn't include dumping, which we do need. We're gonna have debris on even a tarp job. You know what I mean? And by the way, we're gonna remove it when we're done. So we need some form of dumping. My point is, on a 30 square roof, sometimes we're looking at 6,000, 7,000, or more dollars for the tarp, okay? And all we need on that I know I'm skipping around. You guys, and some of you guys already have access to the files. You'll all get them today. Um, this is one of the things in there. But now in all the files, the documents I'm providing, you'll have uh, most of them a Word document and a PDF. So the Word, you can manipulate it and make changes to, right? This is an emergency services authorization form. But I didn't come up with this one. This comes right out of Xactimate. Okay, and that's why this one... I'm not providing the, um, the, the PDF for this one because it just comes like in a formula like that. But I would recommend that you use the one in your Xactimate program because it'll auto-populate all this stuff right here. But my point is this is a standard form in the industry that everybody uses, that insurance restoration companies use, okay? This is standard right here, all right? This is all you need to do a tarp job. You have this with, now I, I would take a minimum of 100 photos at any job, just to let you know, any job, okay? Like usually it's 300 and beyond, okay? But even a tarp job, I'm taking 100 photos or more to prove the damage, okay? So like, because that's always the thing I get at this point is like, oh, what if you're gonna do a tarp job and you're gonna build them all that, and what if they don't approve the roof? Right, good question, right? Like, so it's gonna take some, some skill here. Like first, is it causing water damage to the inside of the building? You know, like, or, or is the hail damage causing leaks yet? Like if we have leaks at all, that's a definite indicator that we're gonna do. And I realize too that sometimes only certain sides of the roof are impacted. So this is not always a one size fits all rule here that I'm giving you. You gotta utilize some common sense, right? If, it, if a tree hit the back side of the house, we don't always need to tarp the whole roof. Um, but if hail fell on the roof evenly, you know, and it damaged it. Now, if they've already applied coverage, if they've already said the roof is damaged and needs to be replaced, no matter what they said it cost, don't worry about it. They've already applied coverage. Tarp on. You know what I mean? They're not, you're, not gonna have to, you're not messing up the roof because they've already approved the roof. That's obvious, right? But if they haven't approved the roof yet and you're going to tarp it before they get there, okay, which is good to do, especially if there's rain coming, I'm going to do that. I'm going to have this form signed, hundreds of photos, Xactimate estimate, very descriptive, any proof I can possibly provide with this to the insurance company, most of the time they'll cut the check directly to you for mitigation services for this part of it. So I would like that to happen before the adjuster appointment so that, so that first payment could also include this. You see what I mean? Um, however, if it's close, just simply wait for the adjuster. <laughs> like, don't get nervous. If you're nervous, just wait for the adjuster to get there, okay? Let them know that you're gonna tarp it 100%. Don't give them your estimate. Okay, but let them know you're going to tarp it 100%. See what they say. Because in their mind, they're not, they're not thinking about all the items you're putting on there, which is accurate, you know, but it's going to be hard for them to say, don't tarp the roof. You realize that, right? Because of their, their involvement, the, the liability factor. They're requiring the client 
to mitigate the damages. So if we're going to go about asking permission to mitigate and they say no, it usually doesn't happen. You know, they're, they're going to, they can resist some, you know, and push you back on your estimates, but the key is documentation, right? But how I even got there, right? Mitigation is that first phase. Um, we talk about uh, smoke damage and water damage and fire damage, right? Think of a kitchen fire at its most basic level, all right? Where you have just, you know, a quick kitchen fire went out quickly, right? But the smoke got all the way throughout the house, all right? That, the level of toxicity there from the soot is going to go all over everything. Everything in the whole home, chances are, or business, now has to be dealt with, right? And so like when we think of in Xactimate, where if you guys are mostly doing roofing in your Xactimate, you're just dealing with, you know, if you, if you go into the drywall category, for example, like if we, if we look at an estimate where the adjuster has remove and replace drywall, which by the way, if we're dealing with a big fire job, big water damage job, that's how the, the estimates from the adjusters are usually written. Remove and replace drywall, remove and replace insulation, remove and replace, remove and replace, right? But it's not, it should not be coming out of the drywall category because there are two other categories in Xactimate that can be used. So you have the water category, the WTR is a water remediation and, and a restoration category essentially, or just simply, and I know a lot of you guys know this already, but like in that category, what I mentioned before, it's category one, category two, category three water damage, right? So for instance, on my estimate with that one spot, water spot and the roof and all that, I'm gonna put R&R &R drywall on there. But the guy over here asked me a question, you know, what are you gonna do when they go crazy on you on the estimate? You know, I'm gonna do a number of things which we'll talk about today, but one of the things I could do if it goes haywire is, you know what, you're right. The estimate is all messed up. Now that I think of it, now that I'm looking at it and you're causing me to look at it more and more, I'm seeing that that's category three water damage, right? And I shouldn't have put remove and replace drywall. I should have put tear out wet drywall and bag for disposal. Because how much is that charged by the square foot, right? And is it category one, category two? You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's more by the square foot each category, as I'm sure you can, you can understand. So I, you're right, I should, tear, I should do tear out wet insulation bag for disposal, tear out wet baseboard bag for disposal, tear out wet cabinets, the whole nine yards, tear out wet flooring, wet carpet, wet pad, right? These are way more expensive. than just, you, you would love it if I wrote it like that, wouldn't you, Mr. Adjuster? You know what I mean? Like R&R &R drywall, get out of here with that, you know? So, then we have the hazardous materials section, which we're, you know, if you are doing mold, which I don't recommend doing, but, or fire, right, um, then you would be working out of the HMR category, hazardous materials. And it's most of the same stuff that I just mentioned in there, right? You're, you tear out wet, or tear out bag for disposal. Um, but essentially in both of those categories, we also have fans, air movers, right? Dehumidifiers, negative air scrubbers, HEPA vacuuming, um, ozone treatment, other things like we have uh, uh, prime the, the, the attic framing with an odor control shellac, okay? Because, and then we have a whole other section, which we'll get to in a moment, which is the contents, okay? But in this home with that kitchen fire, every little thing needs dealt with. So. Every wall, every piece of baseboard by the linear feet, by the linear foot needs to be cleaned, primed, painted. The light fixture needs to be detached, cleaned inside and out and reinstalled. Feel me? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so like, like every little thing, the mirrors have to be cleaned, the windows, so that's to be cleaned, primed, painted, right? This is why mitigation companies love these jobs right? They can set up fans, do all these things. Like it adds up in a hurry from that small little kitchen fire. I, I, I like the kitchen fires a lot better than I do the full on reconstruction. You know what I mean? Like those are not near as fun, <laughs> but like the door, detached door and door hardware, clean door hardware, clean door knob, reinstall, all right? Like it's crazy. And then like alarm clock, clean alarm clock outside of it, 
clean alarm clock inside and out, clean coffee maker, clean blender, clean... <laughs> There's so many items like in that clean ottoman, clean women's fancy blouse, like in Xactimate that's already there. All these years I spent not knowing that it was there when I was a contractor, right? Yeah, go ahead, go for it. So I've got a question. I got an answer, I think. I, got, I, go to I a, hope. A, a kitchen bag, right? Yeah. And the property owner has several rental properties. This is just an example. Mm -hmm. um, has a lot of rental properties, and one of his rental property has a small <coughs> kitchen bag. The insurance is covering the loss, however, it's not covering the property. Right. Because the, the, the renter has to have their own insurance. Yeah. But in order to do the work, I have to do a package. Mm -hmm. In order to do the work and, and to make sure that I mitigate correctly as I as CRC, I have to go ahead and clean everything like you mentioned. Does the insurance have to pay for that? Yeah, it's, it's a real stretch, right? Because the renter has to have the contents coverage, all the contents, right? And so it's immediately when you said renter, that's what I was thinking about, right? Um, yeah, so, and that's, let me go into the contents a little bit here, right? Why are the contents so important? So if you're a renter, when you leave here today, go max out your, your renter's insurance, man. Like up your coverage on it, okay? Because of what he's talking about. I was, I missed the boat with contents as a contractor, okay? So, and, and I mean, before I go to there, let me just put a button on the mitigation, all right? We have tree removal companies, they're mitigation. Plumbers, that's mitigation. Asbestos removal, right, and remediation, that's mitigation. Water damage, fire damage, smoke damage, right? Um, lead, right, a lot, these all mitigate, these are all mitigation items. Board up is mitigation, right? Okay, then we go over to the contents, which is where we're at. In the contents realm, we really have like contents replacement, which we're probably not gonna get involved in. You, you probably will, right? Um, maybe not, <laughs> you know, but like as a PA, you, you, that would be something you would be involved in. And so you really need to get um, your game up on the content. Your fire damage their personal items, so even though they would replace them, it sounds like they might Talk to the correct or moving and the pa the and moving them correct 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 so and he right on right so like that and that's what i'm talking about is the content packing and storing the cps category in exactimate and then contents cleaning which we just started to hit on uh, the alarm clock the blend those are contents those are personal belongings right and so but the thing I really missed the boat on the biggest, and we have contents replacement, we're not gonna get into that. So but the thing I missed the boat on is the contents packing and storing and the cleaning for crying out loud as a contractor. And I found this out because I had a guy hire me to do a virtual estimate on a content cleaning estimate and a content packing estimate, okay? And it was a, it was a, it was a residential three bedroom home, just a normal you know, ranch style home it wasn't anything exotic. It wasn't like a hoarder's house or anything. Like this lady was neat and orderly, but she had a lot of things, a lot of clothes, right? And kitchen fire, Farmers was the insurance company. The guy came to me and said, I need a content cleaning estimate and a separate content pack out storing estimate. And I was like, well, here's the thing, brother. I have all those things in my Xactimate and I'm good at what I do, but I've never done that before. You know, I don't know, I don't know how to do that. He goes, well, it's not that hard. I've got all the documentation. I've got checklist of every little thing. Because if you're doing the cleaning and, and packing and all that, like especially the packing, it's not just packing it up, throwing it in a truck. It's literally inventorying, documenting, labeling. It's you know taking good care of, it's storing in climate controlled storage. It's not just throwing everything in a box. All right, yeah. It's not just every throw, throwing everything in a truck, right? And so or in a pod outside. But I gotta tell you, as a contractor, that's kind of what my thought was. You know, I was like, as a contractor, people would say, well, what do we do with all our stuff in these big water damage jobs? And I'd be like, you know, you know ma'am, honestly, we don't really wanna be going through your personal belongings, so you pack it up and we'll move it for you. And just, God, if I could go back to all that, you know, oh my gosh, the amount of money that I, that I missed in that, um, because of how much money they pay 
to pack it and store it. Climate controlled storage, guys, not pods, right? Like, I don't want my stuff in a hot box out in the driveway, you know, unsecure. Like, they pay for the climate controlled storage every time, that's where I'm gonna put it, right? But they literally pay, you know, by the hour for the technicians to move it, to pack it, to store. They pay that supervision, no problems getting the supervision order on these type of jobs. They're included by the hour to pack it up, inventory, document, right? And so, like, you have all your technicians, all your hours, all the days that they work. You have moving van, different sizes of the moving van, to and from, however many times it's to and from, however many days you need it, and then the square footage of the climate controlled storage times however many months you need it for, right? Like they're paying for all that every time. But anyway, this is the job. The guy came with that. He needed everything uh, on a packing estimate and then a separate one for cleaning. So the cleaning part of it is that essentially all the clothes had to be sent out and treated with ozone treatment, dry cleaning with ozone treatment is the item, and brought back to the house, like taken out and brought back, okay? And we're talking about all the clothing. We're talking about the curtains, the like the bed spreads, the the upholstery, we have like the the lazy boy chairs, right? Like everything, er everything in the whole house. Um, and now with content packing, so so the guy said, I'm I'm willing to let you give it a try. I need you, you know. So great. I drew I did up the estimate for him and I got started and I'm just like researching through the Xactimate. I'm like, oh my gosh, I had no idea that all this stuff was here, you know, like this is absolutely amazing. And I'm just, I'm stacking it up, stacking it up. The estimates just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And so like the, the, the cleaning, and we have, you know, small box, large box, medium size wardrobe box, XL wardrobe box, bubble wrap, fragile uh, stuff, furniture pads, um, you know, mirror boxes and all kinds of stuff in there. A mattress covers, right? Like all these things need to go into the job because the truth is it's all gonna be done anyway. We're just not getting paid for it, right? And so like I was I, I was adding up, long story short, I came up to like 20 something thousand on one, 20 on another. It was insane to me. It was like 42,000 total. And I'm like, man, at the time I was, I was charging based on the percentage of the estimate. <laughs> and so I'm like, he's never gonna wanna pay me for this because it's just way too high, you know? So I told him what it was. He goes, oh, that sounds about right. Send me over the bill, I'll get you paid. <laughs> you know, like, okay. And so I'm thinking, man, I'm feeling bad about it. I'm feeling guilty because I'm thinking farmers never gonna approve this, you know? And so I'm, I'm charging him too much. He sent it to farmers and the next day they approved every penny. So what did I miss? You know what I mean? What did I miss? Like, I couldn't believe it. 42 grand that farmers just didn't even blink an eye at and paid for it just like that. So if that, you know, if you haven't really opened your mind up on the contents, yeah. Just a question on yeah. the, so I know on the mitigation side of it, a lot of them won't pay you any kind of L&P at all. So even on the contents, but if I have a, uh, say, hardwood floors that get damaged and we have to pack it out for the reconstruction side uh, and store it and all that, some of them will pay L&P on that if I'm hiring out somebody. Mm -hmm. Some of them will just kind of argue with it, but I had one recently that, um, of course you know how they did it, it's pack out room large, you know, whatever, I'm like it, it doesn't work that way, it's gotta be packed out, moved out, so right. or, you know, mm -hmm. all that. So I t uh, he told me to submit it, he agreed to it, he argued with the price, that's way too much, I can write it for less myself, is what he said, so I'm sure you can. So he, he then paid it after he agreed to it, but he paid it to the customer with the uh, estimate that I had for the um, pack out company that was doing it. Yet I'm the one that's, you know, overseeing the job and dealing with it. Mm -hmm. And he directed to them so he didn't have to pay the OMP on it. Wow. How did he get the uh, prices from that company? From me. Did you give them their prices? Yeah. Okay. That, well, I understand why you did that, but to me, that would be the solution to solve that going forward, to prevent it from happening again. So what he's saying is, guys, in case you guys didn't hear it, I'll share it with the rest of the classroom here, um, is he's saying like, and this is what insurance companies do too, and you guys have all seen this, when they're talking about, you know, just a little bit of drywall or painting in a room, it's always move out, then reset contents. And that's what I would normally do, unless, we're in this situation where everything literally needs to be packed out, right? Um, like if it's got a, if it's so extensive, we have to move everything out, 
even just that room, it needs to be from the pack out category, right? And so what, what he's saying is that one time he did this, and instead of charging it out in Xactimate piece by piece, he got the bid item, he got the, 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 the quote from the moving company, essentially, a contents company, and sent that to the insurance adjuster, and they went around them and said, we're just going to pay, which is BS. That's so bogus for them to do, right? That was a janky move that that dude made, you know what I mean? But I think to not give them that option ever, don't ever give them the subcontractor invoice. Well, they Get, for it. Give it to them, but redact the prices. Cross it, like, when you see in my... Uh... They ask for the ones whenever you're doing the roof. Do that to it on the prices. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, you can keep all the contact right. information there, but and then when they ask for it, say, I'm sorry, that's under your business. That's my business. That's proprietary information. So, so would you have to then write the estimate? In exact In exact correct. And so along those lines, you know, you, this can go along with like a lot of different trades, right? Like AC work, right? Where uh, the AC unit has to be replaced. And so you could write it in exact for just a three ton unit or whatever it is, right? Um, or you can send the bid item from the AC contractor exactly what it costs, right? Yeah. You know, the insurance will try to do that a lot more than what you think. However, if you have a contract with the homeowner, mm -hmm. that means that, you know, you're doing the work. You're the primary general if contractor. If the insurance tries to go around it, yep. you're the one, you're the general contractor. My, my thing is, hey, I may not use this content company. <laughs> You know what I mean? Well, I may not use this AC company. He's like, well, you can do it yourself and save money. I'm like, no, because then <laughs> I can get Get me another. Get me. Is this the field adjuster? Yeah. Okay. That's another it's problem. Around him, but the, <laughs> that's another the problem. So, so, and this is another thing. I'm, I'm going to just jump all over the place, and I'm sorry, but I'm going to just keep trying to provide gold nuggets, all right, wherever you can find them. Um, but look, so, like, one thing's first. When, they, when we have an item like an AC unit that's damaged, okay, first, we're going to have to prove that, it's that it needs replaced unless they already approved it. But, like, th they're going to put on there maybe comb and AC straighten, AC condenser fins, right? Or maybe repair the AC unit, right? We go through the process. We get the AC guy. He says, you need a new AC unit because of this and that and the other, right? Okay, great, <laughs> right? So like, but instead of even just going right to the insurance company and saying it needs to be replaced, I'm gonna follow their, their process, if you will. So I want my AC guy to come out and attempt the repair and charge me for it, okay? And then I want him to put on letterhead on a new quote as to why it has to be replaced due to these parts, manufacturer specification, building codes, right? It must be upgraded. And then I'm gonna submit that logic to the to the insurance company but here's the thing i want that on a letterhead with no pricing from that ac contractor no pricing at all and if it's got pricing i'm going to redact it but i want the ac technician to give me the most descriptive like if they just write me a bid and they say it's going to cost you this much for this and that i'm like okay but what else is going into this you follow me like what type of electrical is in that what kind of plumbing do you have with that? How many linear feet of lines are you using? What, what other stuff are you using? What, what are you doing to the duct work? What are you doing, right? I need a detailed scope. I don't care about the price. Don't care. I need the scope of items, right? And what I'm going to first do, like my, my process, if you will, I'm going to go through the exercise of trying to translate that into Xactimate. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and find those items, 100 linear feet of this, and da 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 da, da and the best I can in Xactimate. Because chances are, if I do that right, you know, and if the bid's five grand from him, I'm at like nine, 10, you know what I mean? Usually. If I'm lower, only if I'm lower, do I then go ahead and reveal the actual bid item quote from the AC person. I'm using that as an example because I want to do that in all trades, right? For like my kind of my, my, my rule of thumb now. But like the, the thing there, you know, with the contents, like, first of all, we're always giving them an estimate before the bill. So everything we're doing is all estimates. 
It's all hypothetical, really, right? So if I provided a quote from a contents company, I'm the general contractor. I got the contract on this job. The client's got, you know, the insurance company has to deal with me, right? They can't send their own contents people out there. They can to price it, okay, but not to do the work, all right? So, like, I'm in charge, not the insurance company. You know what I mean? This is how it's going to go. This is, so, like, here, I'm never even going to show them that content estimate ever unless my exactimate estimate was lower than that content estimate. You see what I mean? So like that estimate needs to come from your company with your letterhead on it, your, the name of your company. And so if they say, well, we're not, we need to know who you're using and this and that, I don't know who I'm using. We're not that far along yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's not, it's not relevant. It's none of your business, Mr. Adjuster, right? And so, and the other thing I would say, and I asked, was that the field adjuster? Right. So like another thing that really helps me guys a lot that I found that a lot of people just didn't know. Well, you know, I go to places and they're like, you know, in this area, Chad, you don't understand. State Farm's crazy. They don't do, you know, we, we do these things you're talking about. Um, but they, it always goes this one guy and he never approves it and this and that. And I'm like, wait a minute. So are you talking about the field adjuster? He's like, yeah, same field adjuster every time. I'm like, oh, <laughs> so Never, ever, 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 do I ever, 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 ever send my estimate to the field adjuster. Never.